On average, I probably make one Halloween card every year, and that is simply just because it's an excuse for me to get playing with all the dark colours and the grunginess. So the first thing I'm going to do is a background. So I've got myself a 5x7 top fold card. If you can't find these, then they're always readily available. You can make your own by purchasing 7x7 card bases instead and just cutting two inch strip off the side. Always use your scraps, of course. Don't throw that two inch strip away. Now then I've got a piece of watercolor cardstock and this is just ever so slightly smaller. So this is just going to fit, as you can see, on my card front with a bit of a border. And this is what we're going to do the first technique on. Now this technique I found, sorry about the light, I'm in a new studio, at the moment, a temporary studio at the moment, and the lighting's a bit different now. Uh, hopefully only a few weeks and I can get in my new studio with the posh lighting that won't glare on my mats. Um, but this technique that I'm showing you is one that I've actually seen uh, years ago on, I think it was the Ranger website. If you know who created this technique, who thought of it first, please do tag them below because I really can't remember where I saw it exactly now to look back. But essentially what I'm going to do is some ink blending onto my watercolour cardstock. I've got myself here, now this is actually the transfer tape when you use your vinyl, your Cricut, uh, your cutting machine, you pick up the vinyl. Uh, I've put some fluff on it off of my clothing because uh, it was a little bit sticky, but to be honest I've just die cut a circle and if that does peel off my any of my paper or cardstock afterwards when I lift it off that's fine it'll actually just add texture so I'm placing that down onto there that actually looks really cool without the glare you can see you've kind of got because you've got the fluff in there it actually almost looks quite moon like that's what we're going for now my colors and I may also add to these as well but the colors I've chosen so far a mustard seed in the Distress Oxide range, wilted violet and black soot. Like I say, I might add in some orange in there as well. Um, I thought about going for Villainous Potion with purple because that's kind of a Halloween colour. But actually, um, it's a bit dark, I think. I want to keep this nice and bright because I'm actually going to be putting something right in front of it. So I'm just going to go around the moon here, just like so. Not being too precise, I'm actually being quite uh, the opposite of precise. <laughs> and then I'm going to go in with my wilted violet. Now I think I've got another wilted violet brush somewhere. That's better. I really need to clean my wilted violet brush. I must have had some distress ink on it at some point. I keep saying I'll clean it and then after every project I put it away again and forget. So just popping some violet on there. Get around the edge a bit. Into the yellow. Let's bring this yellow back and blend those two together like so okay so now I'm going to go in with my black soot and go all the way around the edges now black soot in the distress oxide range isn't really black it's um, more charcoal color what I love about uh, blending onto watercolour cardstock is you're kind of getting some texture here, which is really cool. There we go, so I've done all my ink blending. I'm now going to do uh, some splatting with my ink as well, just a little bit for now to give us some sort of white stars in there. Okay, and I'll dab that, just lift off any excess. Now this is the fun part, I'm going to remove this stencil, this mask that we put down. You see you've got the bright white. We don't want that as bright as that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray some water around the edge of this white circle and that's going to start allowing the colours to wick in a little. So just like so. We don't want too much. There we go, look at that. So hopefully you can see it's a bit shiny the light just allow those to come in a little let's do a bit more purple there we go now I'm going to spritz over the rest as well because this way I'll make sure that if there's any reaction so any of the whiter bits that's also going to affect the rest of the color not just around the edge of the moon but that looks cool doesn't it okay so what I'm going to do is allow that to dry now that's dry, I want to add a little more of the purple into the moon. Uh, I'm going to do a smooch of the purple and a smooch of the black. Spritz this with water 
and I'm just going to use a little bit of this plastic packaging. You can recycle things you've got around the house. If you've received anything in a plastic bag, use that. Uh, it's just to pick up a little bit of the ink and it really is just a little bit that I'm tapping it off as much as possible until I've got it all pulled on the surface and then I can just tap onto the moon there. There we go. And that's just given that a little bit more texture and a moon-like sort of image. Okay, so now let's move on to the next layer that's going to go on top of this. So next I've taken some chipboard. Now this is just thin chipboard that was actually the reverse of a paper pad. So I just took the backing sheet off and I've trimmed that. I've used a craft knife and a metal ruler. And what I've done is I've measured the area here, my watercolour cardstock. Now that is just over 16 centimetres. So what I've done is I've actually cut this some strips at 16 centimetres long so that I've got a slight border all the way around the edge. Just I just think that would look really cool. And so I've got myself four pieces that are one centimetre wide. So I'll have a piece here, a piece here. These are going to be the outside frame of a window. So that's going to be a two, sort of a two halves window. Then I've got some one centimetre pieces. Across there I found it was 11 centimetres, so I cut some one centimetre width strips at five and a half centimetres each, which will be these. So just place them for now, just to see what they'll look like. And then I cut some half centimetre strips, and they are these. Now what I'm going to do is actually place them the same widths again, one, two, and I'm quite happy for these not to be perfectly straight either because I'd like this window to kind of be a little bit funky, a little bit creepy, a little bit sort of haunted house, um, not straight, not perfectly straight, and then we've got the thin pieces like so. So they, that is basically going to be my window frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my heat gun uh, on my glue gun and I'm going to glue these pieces together exactly as I've laid them here but when I flip them over the thicker outside frames will be at the top the thinner pieces will be the underneath. So now I've got my two windows all glued together I'm going to pop them back onto a mat to keep my desk clean and I'm just going to take some acrylic paint now this is just um, any white acrylic paint it's nothing special and I'm just going to dab that all over these windows. Now I'm just going to add some uh, pumice stone to this and then some black soot as well. Uh, I didn't worry about painting the other side because that's going, they're not, they're not really going to be open, able to open much on the card, they're just to add some dimension um, so I'm not worried about the reverse. If you want them to be able to open fully, you can absolutely still do that and just paint and treat the other side the same way as you are this side. So just going around with my pumice stone, just to give it a slightly darker look, not as bright white. Then my black soot as well, and this one I'm really going to brush upwards on the edges. And to really sort of grunge these up a little bit more, make them a bit more dirty, I'm going to use my Distress Oxide Spray in Walnut Stain. If you don't have this, you could use some Walnut Stain ink or Oxide, smooch it, water it down and flick it. Um, or you could use acrylic paint again, water it down, flick it on. So I'm just being really gentle with this. There we go, to give it some splatters. Now they need to be allowed to dry. I'm going to add some more texture to the doors with some white thread. This is a very thin white cotton thread. Nothing special. I'm just going to bunch it up just between my hands like so. You get a really unpredictable sort of um, feel to that. And I'm just going to clump it in this corner a little. So apply some wet glue. And the wet glue will dry clear, so don't need to worry about this showing up afterwards. There we go. I'm going to press my cotton into that glue. And once each one has dried on there, I'm just going to trim the loops at the edge just to give it more of a, 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 fin a sort of finished feel. So we don't have loops, we have sort of frayed ends instead. 
Now I've decided to pull out my jar of metal ephemera and embellishments. This is, these are things I've been collecting for years and years now. There's zips in there, there's little metal cogs, book rings, bottle tops. Some things are bought embellishments, some are just things I've found around the house, at car boots, whatever it may be, even things like haberdasheries. So I've got here some metal eyelets and I'm actually going to put these onto upside down onto the door frame because when you have them upside down you kind of have that um you have that rigid not rigid um it's an uneven if i show you here it's kind of an uneven edge there so it's a little more rustic and i thought that'd look quite cool as doorknobs and what i also found i'm going to need my tweezers to put these on these are little clasps excuse the state of my fingers where um, you put the metal chain inside to link them together. I've got loads of these. When I've had jeans, handbags, shoes with the tags on, I've saved all of these and I've actually got four of them in very similar colours. So I'm going to apply these as hinges on the edge of my card. Little metal hinges. So I'm going to put one there. Let's put one in there there we go now we can apply our doors to the card front now i've made myself two hinges from black cardstock simply a scored piece of cardstock a little bit shorter than the doors and making sure that the width is suitable so that they will be hidden behind the doors so less than one centimeter so let's glue these first of all to the actual door itself so just using a, a wet glue making sure i'm putting it on the hinge side now bookbinding glue, the one I use from Creative Craft Products, is a really, really good glue. Um, and it's great for sticking paper and things. It's really, really strong when it's dry. Now I've just glued the hinges onto the background there as well. So you can see they're all stuck on. Now I used a 350 GSM cardstock for the black hinges. Um, this way I know that they're going to kind of not want to lay flat if you use something thinner because it will lay flat and they will just sit like so and that's fine if that's what you want you could even glue these down directly if you don't want them to open at all using the stronger cardstock i won't open those right up just now um, because the glue is still dry but that just gives them a little bit of bounce on the uh, fold on the score line of those hinges so they just open up a little bit okay so finishing touches we need to add a sentiment now i've got from my uh, sentiments for all paper pack my textures one i've just cut out <laughs> this is quite funny i've cut out you are so beautiful to me and i've cut it up from a black strip of course um i'm going to just snip between the bow or view here and so there we go i'm going to just trim up the edges and i'm going to put the word boo in between so, so you are you are so beautiful to me so it's a bit of a fun take on a halloween card it's not going to be overly spooky or scary now what i've also done is i've taken some acetate and i have cut myself you can just see those the word boo there now what i'm going to do with these to make them uh, be able to be seen a little bit more is i'm actually going to go around the edge with some glue and i'm going to dip them in uh, a glitter like so and then once that's dry i'm going to apply a little bit of the brown distress oxide spray and that would just give it kind of a, a dirty look as such now this is a pretty messy job here just mostly because the letters are so tiny uh, these are cut from my uh, steampunk type alphabet dies that I've got in the, under the textures range uh, but any alphabet dies you've got would work so I'm going to go round like I say round the edges all the edges and the inside edges as well so you're going to have some see-through elements to this but not loads then I'm going to pick those up with a pair of tweezers and dip them into my twinklets diamond dust so this is just really thick glitter sort of all like large crystal bits dip it right in there make sure a lot of it is covered once that's dry I can choose uh, areas to sort of 
flick away. But at the moment, I've got myself a kind of sparkly B. So let's just put these to the side because these need to dry thoroughly before we can do the next stage. So to work out the spacing, I've put my um, my black paper letter strips there, just whereabouts I want them to be, so that I can figure out where this is going to go. So there's one O, and you can see that brown now makes it stand out. But they've got this kind of translucency to them still, which is really cool. So I want the B to overlap the hinge, the edge, sorry, of the door, but still be secured by it. I'm using hot glue on the acetate. Yeah, making sure that that doesn't stick down the um, the two doors together at all. And now I can stick my letters down. So there we have our creepy moon. Now, obviously, if you're handy with a black pen or you do happen to have a black silhouette stamp, you could put that inside there. Um, but I kind of want to keep this quite light, not too dark. Um, so you've got your You Are Beautiful to Me with the kind of sparkly, uh, semi-see-through boo there. Now with that, I've got the, the occasional glue string around. I'm leaving it. I'm just going to go with it and say that's uh, that just works. So there's my Halloween card for the year. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this and can take some techniques away, even if you don't do Halloween every year.